Adding a forecast to a dashboard can be pretty difficult, but we're going to walk you through an example of how to do it right now. Hey y'all, I'm Jack Tompkins with Pineapple Consulting Firm, always trying to help the small business world become more data driven. Today we're talking forecasts, right? Looking into the future uh, and getting that into a dashboard so you can actually do an actual versus budgeted forecast um, and a variance there, right? Which everybody wants and every CFO specifically um, drives conversations with that info, right? It's really important info. Um, and if you watch our last video, we did a little tutorial on how to make a CSFO, CFO style dashboard, at least a you know baseline functional one. And today we're going to use those same elements and incorporate a forecast on top of it. So you can at least see the base elements or the basic functionality of how to incorporate a forecast into your actuals. So you can get that full, all inclusive and forward looking dashboard as well. Okay, so let's jump back into the dashboard. So here's a dashboard that we referenced as sort of the end goal. Now we could easily incorporate forecasting into this as well, but we chunked this out in a previous video into just some baseline elements. Obviously this is a whole lot uglier, but baseline elements, we created those. We're gonna go one layer deeper and do just a single visual to start and we're gonna incorporate some forecast, okay? So within our backend data, we've got actuals coming in from Coupler and those come in uh, into these um, black rows or black columns rather. And then these blue columns are our helper columns that we use for the dashboard. So we've got our actuals here. For our forecasting, we know that forecasting can be a months long process. There's a whole lot of different variables in there. And if you're a CFO listening to this, I'm sure that you're a better forecaster than I am. So we won't go into the details of how to create the forecast, but I do want to stress the end result format of the forecast. So we've got a very, very simple structure here. It's just a monthly forecast, revenue, expense, profit. You could do this by rep, by territory, by product, all that good stuff, but make sure to keep it in this sort of database format. Okay. So what we're going to do next is incorporate this into the dashboard. So if we jump back here, we've got our, um, our revenue trend, nice and easy, fairly simple, right? What we're going to do is even though our actuals are in this database tab, and the forecast is just in the same file, we do have to treat that as a different data source though. So what we're gonna do is in resources, we're gonna manage added data resources. We've got our existing one, right? Nice and easy, it's the database one. We're gonna duplicate it, so that way we can save some time and just, it'll link us back up to the same sheet and all that good stuff. We're gonna pick the forecast sheet and then we're gonna reconnect. It's gonna say, holy crap, so many things are different. It's okay, we expect it to be different, right? These are fields that didn't exist in the previous. These are fields that are missing from the pre or from the current one that were in the previous. That's all fine, we're just gonna hit apply. Now you can see our list of fields here, and I always recommend changing this name. And actually maybe we'll just change this entire name to be forecast. Hit done, we can close out. And now we're gonna incorporate that into this view. So we've got our database as the data source for this. What we're going to do is blend the data. Now, blending the data is a joining of the data in some fashion, if you're familiar with that term. And I, you can include all the metrics that you need in here, all the different dimensions. Again, we're doing a simplified streamlined version of this. So we're going to add a data source. It's going to be the forecast one that we just created. We're going to drag and drop our revenue forecast and then make sure that there's a date range control on both as well. So we're gonna make year month the date range and then uh, we can do date or year month as the date range there. Now to configure that join, it normally has a pretty good suggestion. In this case, our field names are the exact same, so it picks that up. Uh, if they're not, you could pick um, another dimension that you include in the list. So we'll save that. We'll name this instead of blended data, we'll go actual Verse forecast. We're going to save that. And now this should produce good. It looks the exact same with the uh, exclusion of nulls now because nulls don't exist in our forecast, which works out nicely for us. And all we're going to do is just click and drag revenue 
into this second spot here. So revenue into that second spot there. And great, we've got our two different bar graphs going. You notice there's a bunch of lines though, right? So we've got one axis, we've got a second axis. We need to change those. It also changed the sorting on us. We can figure all that out. For starters, we want the same axis, right? Or at least the same values. So in the style section, if we scroll down a little bit, axes, we're gonna have just a single axis. Looks a lot better already, right? And now we're gonna resort. So we've got year month, and we're gonna sort that ascending, which is how uh, you would normally look at things. And we're gonna make sure to include um, a couple more months so we get at least the full year of 2024. So there we go. You could change up the formatting a little bit, but you can see now we've got our revenue in here and our revenue forecast um, color there, and you can change the colors, of course, as well. One other calculation that we're gonna make is just that actual variance number. So we're gonna make a scorecard. I'm gonna put that right here. And it defaulted since this is our last data source. We're still in that actual V forecast, which is good. Now you'll notice that we can't create a field, unfortunately, in blended data. It, it doesn't apply to the data pane. It does exist though, if you click on the metric and then you can add a field within here. So let's just call it variance. Um, we're gonna have it be a percent, sure percent one, doesn't matter. That means there's gonna be one decimal place. And all we're gonna do here is just regular old revenue divided by our revenue forecast, minus one. You'll get a little green check mark. We got a good formula. Now you'll see this change that for whatever time frame that we're picking, we apparently did great versus our budget, versus our forecast. What we need to do is make sure that it is controlled by a date. So much like our last video, we're gonna add in a date range here. And we wanna make sure that the trend graph stays, but this is impacted. So we're gonna default this date range to last month. So it'll be February. Hit apply there. Good, so this doesn't change, which is what we want. And this minus 42%. Let's see, we've got 10,000 in actual and 18 in forecast. That feels about right to me. Uh, you can always conditional format this too. It'd be red, yellow, green. Um, but our, our trend graph stayed. It has both, it has the full year in there. We have a uh, control in there to control the date. And we've got our variance calculation there. So this is now a somewhat functional actual versus forecast dashboard for CFOs. So there we go. Not too bad, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, again, that's just the building blocks. There's a whole lot more that can come from that. And I know that um, there's a lot of different variables and a lot of different dimensions that you want to include in a forecast, but those are the inner workings of the foundational pieces of getting a forecast into Looker Studio. We do this stuff all the time. We love working with clients on forecasting because as we all know, financials typically a lagging metric. We want to look a little bit into the future and that's always a really, really fun conversation. So please feel free to reach out. We love building these dashboards, especially in Looker Studio, especially for CFOs or CFO style dashboards. So don't hesitate. Give us a shout. Um, our website and ways to contact us uh, are linked below. Talk soon, y'all.